In today's video, I will have a look at the ASUS P3BF, a slot 1 motherboard for the Pentium 2 and the Pentium 3. The revision of the board is 1.04. This motherboard is built around Intel's 440BX chipset and has one ISA slot as well as six PCI slots, so you're never running out of room when you're installing your Voodoo 2s running in SLI. But this board has a lot of other positives. It also has four DIMM sockets to support up to a whopping 1GB of memory. It may sound silly today, but around the year 2000, 256MB modules were just arriving in the market. Another interesting feature of this board is the so-called soft menu. It allows you to set the front side bus as well as the CPU voltage in the BIOS. No longer is there a need for you to open your case and change jumpers by hand. Nevertheless, ASUS included a 10-digit dip switch on the board in case you prefer to set parameters manually. In this picture, you see my board utilizing the soft menu. All dip switches are in off mode. ASUS also includes a utility called PC Probe, which utilizes their own hardware monitoring ICs. Maybe we have a look at this tool in a future video. Ok, enough about the board, let's put it together and switch it on for the first time. I will use a Pentium 2 at 400MHz, a single stick of 128MB of memory and an ATI Radeon 9200 SE. We will not see many benchmarks today, we just want to check the board's working condition and update the BIOS to the latest version. Wow, that doesn't sound good at all. This fan definitely needs servicing. Let's see if we can fix the fan by adding a bit of machine oil. Oh, look at that. This fan has already been serviced in the past. Can you see the transparent tape there? Usually there is a sticker with some details about the fan, like voltage and current draw. We can still try to add fresh oil but I think this fan has to be replaced sooner or later. Let's cover the fan again and hopefully it will run much smoother now. That sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Now we can install the CPU again and continue with the board. The board posts and detected the Pentium 2 400 with 128MB of memory. But the hardware monitor seems to have found a problem. Let's have a look. And here we see that a sensor monitoring the negative 5V rail returns a value that is much lower than it should be. This is not really surprising because I'm using a power supply that does not have a negative 5V rail. As far as I know, only the ISA bus requires this voltage and therefore we can ignore it for now. Now the board goes past the initial boot screen and we can try to run a few tests to see how the board performs before flashing the BIOS. First up is Speedsys. We get around 442 points in the CPU test, which seems a bit lower than it's supposed to be. Also, the graphs of the cache read and write speeds look odd. The performance is fluctuating quite a bit. And I'm not sure why the read speed is significantly lower than writing or moving data. Let's see if the BIOS update will improve those values. Here is another benchmark result from System Info. We are getting a score of around 965. I think we are ready to try to update the BIOS of this motherboard. I'm using a tool provided by ASUS on their website. They still have several BIOS versions available for download, as well as this tool named AFLASH. Ok, greeted with a red arrow message. Flash protection switches on. Hmm. I'm not aware of any flash protection switch, but I did see something in the BIOS if I remember correctly. We get to this in a bit, but first let's see what else we have here. We can see the currently installed BIOS version, which is 1005. It was released in March 2000. Then we can choose between two options, either to save the current BIOS to a file or to update the BIOS excluding the boot block. For this video, I won't get into boot blocks and ESCD. This will be material for a future video. 
but it is interesting that the manual specifically states to update the BIOS including the boot block and ESCD. Even the screenshots they have in the manual, although in very poor quality, shows that the update should be done including the boot block. All we can do now is to try to save the BIOS to the disk. We just have to enter a file name and let the tool do its work. Ok, the BIOS was saved successfully. Now let's try and see if and how we can get rid of this flash protection error message. Only then will we be able to continue with this tool. Back in the BIOS, I can see that the option for BIOS update is already enabled. So that shouldn't be the issue. Let's see what the manual says about this setting. There is information about this option, but to be honest, I don't really understand what it means. I would have expected a very different explanation, but it looks like this setting is not affecting the flashing process. Maybe let's try to use a different tool to flash the BIOS. In the past, I have used a tool called Uniflash to flash the BIOS of an older ASUS Socket 7 motherboard. If you're interested, have a look at that video once you're done with this one. Uniflash does not detect the BIOS chip. We can read and save the BIOS like we could with the ASUS tool but the flashing options are greyed out. Unfortunately, we cannot use Uniflash to update this board to the latest BIOS version. I guess we could try a flash one more time just in case the setting we have resaved in the BIOS changed something. Oh, the tool detected the flash memory chip. We don't have the error anymore. I'm happy about that, but I don't know what has changed. The only thing I did was to go into the BIOS and change the BIOS update setting, which was already set to enabled. In any case, this setting does not control the ability to flash or write protect the BIOS. I have tested this off camera and can verify that this setting does not affect the flashing process. And although I tried, I could not reproduce the flash protection error message. So I guess this is one of those weird things that happen from time to time. One other thing I have done was to press the BIOS chip into its socket. I don't know if this really is the magic touch this board needed, but I thought I'll share it anyway. The good news is that we are now one step closer to flash the BIOS. One last thing we need to solve is that the tool still only offers to flash the BIOS without the boot block and ESCD. The manual mentions clearly that we should include the boot block during the BIOS update. I went through a few forum posts and one person suggested to check what parameters AFlash supports. Ok, let's check. Forward slash question mark. Oh, there is an option to include the boot block when we start the program with the option boot. Maybe the boot block update gave ASUS some problems and they've tried to hide it from the common user. Let's try it out. We are back in the AFlash utility and it still detects the flash memory chip. Now it also offers to update the BIOS including the boot block. Finally we can try to update the BIOS. By the way, the BIOS I am using is not from the ASUS website. It is a modded BIOS I have found on Vogons. You can find a link to the forum post in the video description. The modified BIOS fixes a few issues, updates processor microcodes and unlocks CPU core voltages to allow for undervolting. This may be a bit of a spoiler, but my next video will be about undervolting this Pentium CPU as well as an update to the .NET application I have written to measure the temperature of a heavily modified AMD K62+. Ok, let's flash this modified BIOS on this board. We have to enter the file name of the BIOS we want to write to the flash chip. Before the tool starts flashing the BIOS, it shows a summary of the current BIOS version and the one that you are about to upgrade to. Yes, we are sure. By the way, if you like this video so far, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel so you get future updates. This will help me tremendously and keep me motivated to make more videos in the future. The tool reports that we have successfully flashed our BIOS chip. Now we get the info that we should turn off the power of the PC and load the setup default settings once we reboot. Let's cut the power to the board and hope to see it come back to life with the new BIOS. And it boots and we can see the BIOS revision 1008.
let's go into the BIOS and see what has changed. Just in case you're wondering, I did load the BIOS defaults off camera. There are no changes to the CPU speed. The values are identical to the old BIOS. Also, for the CPU bus frequency, the values are the same. But the CPU vCore values have changed. Now we have significantly more values to choose from. The old BIOS only allowed us to overvolt the CPU. Great to see that we are more flexible now. The hardware monitor also hasn't changed, but good to see that everything is still there. Now we can check if the update has improved some of the benchmark results. And we are back in Speedsys. We can see that the CPU score is now closer to where it is supposed to be. We get almost 20 points extra, which is a performance increase of around 4%. Also, if you have a look at the graphs measuring the cache performance, you see smooth lines. The results of the memory benchmarks have also slightly improved. The read performance, however, is still quite low compared to the write and move operations. If you know why that is, let me know in the comments. Finally, let's have a look at the score we get in System Info. Before we got a value of around 965. And now we get a bit over 1000. Again, almost 4% improvement. I will use this board in future videos with other Pentium 2, Pentium 3 and Socket 370 adapter cards. If you don't want to miss this, please subscribe to my channel. And so we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and give it a like if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.